So Formula E has been evolving for a decade now, but this this next step to the Gen 4 car feels like a complete reset. It really is. We're looking at something engineered to be, well, aggressive and sustainable all at once. And that's what we're going to unpack today. This machine is set for the 2026-27 season, and it's not just about going faster, it's about bringing together everything learned so far into a car with what the sources call total grip. Exactly. It's the culmination of everything from Gen 1 to Gen 3. The sources are calling it the best demonstrator for what electric tech can do, especially on these tight street circuits. Okay, so let's get into the core specs, because the jump from Gen 3 is, it's just huge. Talk me through the power figures. Right, so the maximum deployment power is jumping to 600 kilowatts. Yeah. But uh, here's where it gets really interesting for anyone who loves strategy. Go on. The regeneration capability is even higher. We're talking 700 kilowatts. Wait, 700. So you're saying it can pull back more energy under braking than a Gen 3 car could even put down on a straight? That's exactly it. It completely forces a rethink of, you know, traditional racing lines, braking points. Every corner becomes a power-up. A super efficient one, yeah. Yeah. And then you combine that with other massive change permanent four-wheel drive. Which is a first. A first. And it means all that instant electric torque can be put down so much more effectively, the acceleration out of slow corners is going to be just brutal. So you've got 600 kilowatts of power, 700 kilowatts of region, and permanent 4WD. I mean, controlling that has to be a nightmare. Control is everything. You're absolutely right. This level of performance it needs systems far beyond anything mechanical. So what are we talking about technologically? The FIA is mandating a whole package. There's a full electrical braking system, which is key for managing that regen, plus an active differential, traction control, and an anti-locking system. Okay, hold on. The active differential. With four-wheel drive already there, why is that active component so essential? It's not a luxury. It's a necessity. The active diff can shift power and torque instantly, not just front to back, but also side to side. Ah, I see. So when a driver is braking hard and regenerating a huge amount of force, then immediately asking for 600 kilowatts on exit, the system is what's keeping the car on the road. It's optimizing traction in milliseconds. And this idea of optimizing for every situation, it extends to the aero too, right? I saw something about two different configurations. Yeah, the car is designed to be modular. For the race, they'll use a low drag setup you know, for efficiency and top speed. Makes sense. But for qualifying, they can bolt on a high downforce package. This lets them go for pure maximum grip for that one perfect lap without having to worry about energy conservation. This all sounds like a massive undertaking. The FIA provides the common parts, chassis, battery, front motor, and then the manufacturers build their own rear powertrain and control systems on top. It's a huge challenge. And they're doing this all 18 months before the first race. Is that typical? It shows a lot of confidence in the platform, and yep. testing is already well underway. They're aiming to get about 8,000 kilometers on the clock for each car. Which is, what, a full season's worth of driving? Pretty much. The goal is to hand the teams a package that is absolutely battle-tested and ready to be pushed to its limits from race one. So this Gen 4, it really is a fierce machine. It's defining the next era of electric racing right now. I think if you look at the big picture, it's that combination of permanent 4WD and that massive 700 kilowatt region. It means energy management is no longer just defensive, you know, saving battery. It becomes a weapon. It becomes about actively weaponizing energy recovery. Critical systems level thinking from the drivers is going to be more important than ever before. We have 600 kilowatts of deployment, but we have 700 on regen. So being able to manage that, how to manage that during a race, it adds a new dynamic and a constant evolution that we've seen informally. I think it's going to bring a lot of challenges to the drivers. I think having the amazing potential of acceleration of a four wheel drive car on all of the exits in street circuits, in demanding areas between walls, you're going to have to be so hyper focused and the speed adds a slightly different dynamic. Two aero configuration to give a, a low drag for race and high downforce configuration for the quali, again, to extract the maximum performance of the car. Full electrical uh, braking system, active diff, traction control, anti-locking system. So all together, we are well focused to be in line with uh, mass production development and to give the maximum car performance. With electrical technology, it's very easy to implement on fourth motor. So it's a permanent four-wheel drive and so this is really uh, probably the best demonstrator we can imagine to show 